Hey everybody, welcome to JRB Live. We have Nick Goss back tonight. Good Hi. evening, how are you doing? I'm doing wonderful, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you, me too, it's fun yeah. to be back. Yes, I know, I think this is your fourth time. I think so. Yes, so exciting. I, you, I don't know, I, I'm glad that I'm back. You know, I'm glad I've, you're back too. I've four times is a lot of times. It is, I know, um, and and I know I know that we have even more things to talk about than four times of you being oh here. So this will definitely not be your last time. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. Well, yet to be seen. Yeah. I, be. I may. I may open my mouth too wide. Definitely not. It's never. <laughs> it's, it's not. It's not right. too wide. We have tricky subjects here already. Yes. Hey, tricky. Tricky. So good to see you. Woo! <laughs> hey. By the way. Uh, Tricky answered those same questions for us. Oh man! And uh, he also has a has a joke and everything. And we're gonna we're gonna play that. Oh, I can't and, wait! Uh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna play that in a couple of weeks. I think uh, I'm not sure when. I'm not sure which Thursday we're doing it. Okay, okay. It's 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 great. You'll love it. Awesome. And he was on the show though. No, he wasn't on the show. He recorded himself. Got it. Yeah, because uh, we asked our we asked our uh, patrons to do that. Oh, and Cactus Kicker is watching too. Hey, um, so awesome. that set of questions we want to, if we have a guest on Thursdays, we want to ask them those questions. Right. And uh, we all, we thought it'd be cool to, when we don't have guests, to play a video of our beloved patrons. Yes. Uh, at, recording themselves answering those questions. And Cactus and Tricky have both sent their video. And it's so great. I'm, I can't I'm so wait. excited. It's like really cool. I mean, because you put the you, you like you see their names and then you put the face to the name, yeah, and you really get a sense of like their personality, yeah. and it's like you feel like you know them. You well, and I feel like I do know them already, but all I know is them in the chat. But now it's like it's awesome. Yes, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what you guys look like and to hear the joke for sure. Super cool. Super cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, so tonight we um are not. I'm going to talk about your books anyway, but you're not here this time um, about your books. You're here for the Beast of AI, which That's is Chat right. GPT. I may have um, some opinions. For sure. I know. I have a lot to say, but I'm going to kind of let you lead because we know how I do things. And that's in the way of chasing the rabbit. That's okay. So, we can chase a rabbit too. Yeah. But I'm going to let you lead so that okay. it kind of stays as – I want to stay as structured as possible because it is a very important topic, I think. Um, and I know you think so too. I do. And so I just want to, you know, stay a little structure tonight. Yeah, that's but, fine. <laughs> You're relying on me for the structure. Yes. Like I said, could be my last time here. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Any right. sort of structure is better than me because I'm just like squirrel. Yeah, but you're, but it's fun. You're fun. That's 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 great. That's what people love about the show is that you can go in any direction and it's fun and you're it's energetic and it's it's great. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to do the toast. We got to do the toast. We got to do the toast. So um, I have a new toast for the show that you heard last week. Um, and Tricky and Cactus did it last week. But um, I have stolen it from Nick and Jonathan because um, they have the wonderful toast of take up the broken sword of your father and strike down the darkness. That's right. So I have um, kind of um, made a female version. <laughs> and so we're going to we're going to merge them together today. So you say yours first, and then I say mine after, and then we both say and strike down the darkness? Or how do I you want to do it? you would go first. Okay. I can do yeah. that. Okay. All right. All right. Let's do it. You ready? I'm ready. Take up the broken sword of your father. Take up, take up the bloody tent peg of your mother. <laughs> and, and strike, strike down, down the darkness. darkness. Cheers. Mm. Awesome. The bloody tent peg of your mother. So that's Jael. JL. Yeah. JL from the Bible. Oh, it's a great yeah. story. That's what I was thinking because, you know, we kind of run the house, you know, while the husband is providing <laughs> in the, in the, in the traditional way of things. But, um, every now and then you got to drive a tent peg through a temple. <laughs> JL is the ultimate mama bear. 
Exactly. Yes. Um, and I feel like we're, um, I feel like we're driving a temp peg today in a way, you know, you're, um, you're uh, taking up the broken sword of your father and yep. I'm driving the tent peg because we're sitting here in the house. Yeah. And chat GPT, I think, <laughs> I think that, oh man, Chris Caps, Chris Caps is at work. Hey guys, sadly I'm at work. Work is always in the way. That's awesome, Chris. Thank you. Yeah. Very cool. Thanks, Chris, for stopping in. Well, uh, awesome. Such great you watchers. Mean- these guys they're the best they're the best they're the best they're the best gang um, yes. um okay so we're talking about chat gpt today yeah and um, AI. because we hate it we <laughs> hate it because we're authors we're authors yeah um but you should hate it too and that's what we're going to talk about uh you know just <laughs> all of the things <laughs> that's funny yeah we well, hate it and you should hate it too exactly well and if you don't should. you're not going to heaven well, okay. So you and I, you know, have different eschatology, eschatological, esca, we have different eschatology, you and there I. You go. Okay. I still, <laughs> I still, indeed, I still enjoy all of your content. I Thank still you. find it super interesting, Thank you know, you. but where you think there's like, um, um, like a cataclysmic end of the world coming, I'm more think of a judgment, you know, and I think this is the judgment. Okay, I think ChatGPT is going is a judgment from God on humanity, and um, those mm. who stay away from it um, because of all the things we're going to talk about today. People yep. that are the next generation that has it is that is used to ChatGPT will have they will not be able to figure to think in any way. They will be mm. the weakest, the weakest generation there ever has been. Yep. Um, and for those who have run to the mountains, <laughs> us who are, we're not messing with it at all, um, we'll still have, we'll still be able to do all of the things that they want. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, you know, the <clears throat> all the things that we bemoan as authors about uh, social media and, you know, the, the internet in general yeah. and the shortcuts that you can take. Yeah. And all of the... Uh, the fallout of that, like the diminished ability of young people to speak, yeah, uh, their diminished ability to write, yeah. Uh, and I'm not talking about prose; I'm talking about like their name, right? Like to write, and, yeah. And, you know, uh, and communicate in printed word instead of images. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's all been really diminished. And to your point. ChatGPT and other implementations of AI yeah. is going to be an accelerant on the raging dumpster fire that already is yeah. the internet and social media. It's just going to compound the already existing problems. Yes. I just described Cactus Kicker. <laughs> I'm, when I said raging dumpster fire, is that... <laughs> You're not. Is that what it is? No. I'm just assuming. uh, Tricky and Cactus always go back and forth. I know. (laughs) They're so great. They're so great. I know. Um, Okay. So before we get into this, though, I do want to just real quick, okay, talk about your book. Just um, say what you write, okay, because they need to be talked about as much as possible. Um, Nick Goss has written eight, um, but I have seven because the eighth was... The eighth was never a paperback. No, it was a free download prequel. Yeah. Yep. But eight wonderful middle grade novels that you have to have for your children. Uh, the timepiece is the first, um, and there is uh, just seven wonderful middle grade books. I started this channel because um, because of the wokeness in kids literature. In Everything you're getting right now is woke. If you're if you're getting a traditionally published book in a bookstore, it is a uh, ninety nine point nine percent chance that you that it's that it is um, of the it is from the mindset of a radical liberal. Okay, <laughs> and yeah. um, and Nick's books are so good, and I've I've found so many Thank great you. authors on here, um, but I I I really want more middle grade. You know. 
Um, there's so many great YA novels and I'm so glad that I've found them. Um, but we need, we need, we need more middle grade and Nick's books are fantastic. And they just, I mean, look at this. It's so good. No, it's yeah. so good. And not only are they such a great read for your middle grader, um, your middle grade reader, but, um, but you guys, you and Rayana are so good at including children in your work. And yeah. um, just, I mean, this one was written by Nick and his his daughter. Yeah. And it's it's fantastic. It's not, I mean. I, I basically transcribed it. It's so good. That was my only contribution. Yes. It's making sure it was, you know, readable in print. Right, yeah. She came up with every detail of that story, including the storyline and every character. Everything that had, it's, and it was, she blew me away that she intuitively knew. She doesn't know what a three act story structure is. She couldn't define sure. it. Yeah. But she told me the perfect story. She told the perfect story. I was so impressed. It's a page turner. It is a page turner. You think like something coming, because how old was she then? Eight. She was eight years old. Eight. You'd think it would be like, you know, hearts and flowers and all this, but it's not. It's not at all. There's the dead mermaid. Yeah. That's in there. You know, yep. I mean, it's it's so good. Um, this one, um, oh, I say yeah. Hapis Chronicles, but you corrected me last time. How do you say it again? Hapis. Hapis. You can say Hapis. 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 I like Hapis. Yeah, Hapis Chronicles. Anyways, but this was written by a bunch of kids. A bunch yep. of compiled stories from a bunch of kids, and it's so good, and it just weaves into the story. It's such a good series. So, you know, if you have a child in your life, you have to get the Travelers League series. That's right. They're so good. Amazon.com. Yes, Amazon.com. Travel, Travelers course, League. I will put it in the show notes. But, um, <laughs> but um, you know, if you guys know any more fantastic um, middle grade authors, Send them my way because Absolutely. I really want to read their stuff and promote them. Yep. Also, Henry Catherine. Henry oh. Catherine is for your YA, your mid, your um, your teen, your teen in your life. So yep. good, such a page turner. You know, so on, interesting. on the Goslings, when I've when we talk about our books at the end of the streams and the times that I've decided to talk about Henry Half Moon, I realized that I should just read the back of the book because I can never really on the fly give yeah. a good, you know, enticing book description. That's so, yes, but nobody right. can give a better description than someone who's read it and liked it. And that's why I so appreciate all the times that you've talked about it. Yes. Telling people, you know, because I truly believe that it's – this sounds so arrogant. No. I, I hate to hear myself talk. Sometimes I don't like to read what I've uh, written. But Henry Half Moon, I enjoyed writing that book and then reading it and then listening to the audiobook so much. Oh, man. Yeah. And I feel kind of guilty that I like it. You're supposed to like it. I know, but I feel like yeah. I don't like it too much. No, no, it's so good. This um, it. I don't. I don't know how long it's been since I've read this book, um, but I still love it so much. But when I first read it, and you're fresh out of the book, I could not stop. Cool. Raving about it. Know. You know, it's mm -hmm. just um, your teen. It's so good. I mean, um, it leads to Christianity, yeah. but. Um, but it's just exactly what you're looking for. I, it's th things like this. Um, we're starting. We had our first um, task force meeting the other day on, you know, just trying to like um, making things, making yeah. things to stand up against wokeness in kids literature. Yeah. Um, and, and we need fantastic things that can just be on the shelf next to um, the woke stuff. Yeah. You know, next to the woke stuff and you're the, the kids, the teens are going to love it. It's not preaching to them at all. No, it's, um, it's just preaching. a story. It's hard uh, to believe because you know how preachy I am about when I get opinionated. I get a little self-righteous. Yeah, but, but so is everybody in real life. Yeah, you know, I mean, so is every like all the authors that are writing, you know, um, uh, I'm looking at my bookshelf. That's what's over there. But like, you know, the um, this what's his name? Uh, Neil Schusterman, like all they're yeah. all they're all preaching in their yeah. real lives, yeah. you know? And that's the problem when the traditional publishing world um, is only publishing radical liberals, then all of your, whether you're trying to or not, those views are coming out in the story, okay? So that's why we're fighting because yeah. um, we don't want to make preachy books, but because we're Christian conservatives, that stuff just naturally goes into our stories, yeah. you know? Um, and so over a... Uh, a balanced bookshelf, you know, 
<laughs> we want to give, we want us to be there too. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. We absolutely want to be there. Yeah. Uh, we want to have, you know, influence and a voice and, you know, give people that option. And uh, when it, it's really important now, I think even more because mm -hmm. talking about like chat GPT, that is a, it's a learning model. So AI has to have data all the time. It devours data mm -hmm. so it can give more precise, more authoritative answers, yeah. you know, correct or otherwise. Yeah. And it is, you know, AI, as far as we know, and this, you know, set aside our belief in the supernatural, set aside our, you know, theories and conjectures that sure. there's something spiritual behind AI just talking about the technology as it is. Mm -hmm. uh, it can do amazing things, but it doesn't decide on its own what amazing things it wants to do. Yeah. It doesn't prompt itself to go. In. So the human user points it, directs it, mm -hmm. enters the prompt and sends it out. And the results are astounding and alarming uh -huh. and disruptive. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is that code is being developed by flawed human beings yeah and they're going to their bias mm -hmm. their worldview will subtly seep into their work because they might assume that wokeness is the status quo you know preferable accepted ideology that's just the way our culture wants it to go and they feel like that's probably that should probably just be the standard so without even realizing it yeah they could jilt, if you will, AI uh, to give you responses that might uh, uh, promote that ideology. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's, you know, there uh, a couple months ago, people were asking Chet GPT three or uh, G yeah, GPT three. Yeah. Tell me a joke about Joe Biden, and it wouldn't. It said, you know, I'm not gonna you know, make jokes about, you know, the president of the United States. I don't make yeah. political comments, blah, blah, blah. And then they said, tell me a joke about Donald Trump. And it told them a joke about Donald Trump. Wow. You know? yeah. uh, so in what's good for the goose should be good for the gander. There should be no bias, but that's not reality. Because right. The technology is created mm -hmm. again by already biased, uh, flawed humans. Yeah. Um, they, it, you know what, you know, I'll tell you who's really programming AI, mm -hmm. developing AI. It's like the high priests of Sil of the Silicon Valley tech yeah. cults, right? Yeah. The top engineers, the top developers, the CEOs, you know, the the, the billionaires, the the mm -hmm. investors. Um, you know, they they have kind of a shared, in a way, a shared ideology. Yeah. And that's just going to come through. Yeah. yeah. So when you tell AI to write me a novel, mm -hmm. write me a, a YA novel or write me a middle grade story about a boy with a timepiece, which I did mm -hmm. not do, by the way. Right. But if you were to do that, it might come back with some elements that as Christians, we would feel inappropriate. Yeah. You know, and there's because of the ease of creating, you know, in-depth sophisticated content like a novel mm -hmm. you're going to see books being stamped out and by stamped out i mean replicated created quickly like on an assembly line yeah. by people who want to saturate the market they want to saturate amazon it's going to make it very hard it's yeah. going to make it hard to advertise it's going to make it hard to stand out and compete you know no, so yeah. you authors especially self-published authors you need to be you need to be ready for that yeah for sure um on in you know doing research for this show um you know one of the uh, one of the speakers who did kind of a documentary on it um said you know basically you will it for the for the 2024 election you will not be able to um it, it'll be a the quote unquote shit show because because um, you won't be able to 
nothing. All of the troll farms and um, um, just all of that, you know, it'll be um, um, articles that seem real with yeah. pictures that look real, um, yeah. just with crap in it, you know? And so you're not going to be able to believe anything or trust anything, which I kind of look at as a good thing. Once, once everything is, you can't trust anything on here on the internet. Yep. Um, I think it'll be good for us as a, <laughs> I agree with you a hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. Uh, we know that they can deep fake. Yeah. Uh, and, and most people I'm assuming that many, I'll say I, I make a lot of generalizations and I need to not do that. I think, I think many people, uh, get their news mm -hmm. uh, from news agency posts through their social media. Yeah. Uh, there are some that might go directly to the website of, you know, like Fox or CNN, just the two biggest examples. I would not be surprised at all if those articles currently are being generated by the use of, you know, GPT-4. Yeah. You know, chat GPT, I, I, you know, or some other AI application. Mm -hmm. uh, there, you know. The writing of articles, the writing of books, uh, the writing of you name it, marketing materials, that whole gig economy is going to be and is being, they use the word, they use the very nice, softly landing word. It's going to be disruptive. It's going to disrupt. It's going to disrupt. Disruptive is watching a movie and somebody walks in front of the screen. Yeah. That's disruptive. Uh, what's really happening is they're like walking into the room, unplugging the TV and smashing it with a ball sure. hammer. Yeah. That's really what's going to happen to the mm -hmm. gig economy. And I have two friends just at work uh, who both had gigs writing. Mm -hmm. uh, one wrote articles. The other wrote show notes for podcasts. And yeah. that's gone. That income is gone because mm -hmm. their clients – Inform don't that they don't need you anymore. You can yeah. do it for free quickly. So that's coming. Yeah. So there are some things we can do. Yeah. Uh, but um, and we can talk about those. I want to talk about like three issues with AI and I want to talk about three yeah. solutions. OK. It's more about AI in general. But at the same time, I also want to keep the conversation coming back to like writing. Yeah. OK. So. All right. Well, first of all, um, you know, just before we get deep into it you know um some people don't know what chat gpt is and it is open ai um and it it came out chat gpt 3.5 came out in march of this year um and its creator said they were blown away no one expected that millions and millions of mi and millions of people would be using it which i don't believe um but it's so advanced um that you can literally um create original content original content in minutes um so novels um essays um it codes in minutes so an original video game that you can play in minutes that has never been made before and okay. adjust and adjust it you know you yeah. can create a video game and then you can tell it make tweaks yeah so yeah yeah and, and it's, it's go ahead so i was gonna say you know the coding thing is really like that's really shocking shocking like, like it's one thing to enter search result you know a search in google and get page after page of results and then it's another thing to you know ask uh chat gpt a question mm -hmm. to search for something for you and get one definitive authoritative yeah. result in super detail right uh, that's like mind blowing in itself, but the fact that it can also code when you think about like, like, it's accelerated the progression of technology so much that there's no way you could ever now ever again, go to any type of, uh, go through any type of learning program, go to school to learn computer science and learn to code and all these things. And by the time you get out of school, a lot of what you, there's kind of a fear that like a lot of what you know will be irrelevant. Yeah. Unless you go to school to learn how to become kind of a prompt engineer. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, what is the code that AI sits on and uses? That's yeah. really, that's really what you need to be learning if you're going to go into a tech field. Yeah. 
Yeah. So um, I, I didn't mean to derail you, but the no. coding thing is in particular scary to me because I have a friend who is uh, recently single mm -hmm. and, 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 and a mom. Yeah. And she is going to school to learn how to code. Sure. She has no IT background. She just wants to take a new path in her life. And as soon as she made that decision, started taking courses, here comes chat GPT that yeah. can already do for free what she's going to spend the next two to three years learning how to do. Yeah. Sure. And then try to go out to the market and charge for some kind of service or get a job. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just, you got to, you got to, it's it's a different economy now. Mm. So. Yeah, that's so sad. It's so sad. And um, while that is so sad, um, you know, there's so many reasons to hate ChatGPT. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not only is it taking jobs, but it's it's literally going to ruin humanity, like human to human rel relationships, and um, just. Humanity. humanity yeah it, yeah it's going to make us even so the number my number one gotta be my number one non-religious number one beef with smart technology mm -hmm. is that it has made us entirely dependent yeah there's an app for everything yeah people that have been going to the same grocery store for 20 years which is around the corner if you were to take their phone away, they wouldn't be able to find the grocery store. You yeah, know? right. Uh, and that's an exaggeration, but no, I understand. Yeah, to you know, to that point, mm -hmm. uh, there, there's, a, there's an app for everything. We rely on it for everything, and you know, artificial intelligence is just going to make that that problem, the result of that problem, that dependency and reliance. It's going to make it way yeah. worse. Way worse. Oh man! Well, because that's um, what everybody who isn't even in into Chat G Chat uh, the Chat GPT for um for like novel writing and art and things like that, um, which is awful. But um, they're excited that it can like make them a a personalized fitness and diet plan, a personalized um grocery list, like in order of yeah. the grocery store, you know, I mean, just the things that it's doing is wild. Um, and prompts, prompts is a big one. So yeah. um, for people who have a hard time coming up with ideas, it gives them prompts. But the thing is, is we're stuck, we're, we're no longer thinking for ourselves. Okay. Like yeah. we're no longer using our minds to on the most basic level, Yeah, on the most basic level. OK, so then we have, like you said, the high priest of technology um, who are in charge of all this. Um, and our future is going to be a bunch of mindless zombies. Yeah. I mean, I'm not even a conspiracy theorist, but this is so obvious to even normies. Like, it's, me. yeah, it's it's just common. It's just common sense. Yes. When you look at the when you look at the issue and that's one of the one of that's one of the three issues that I have. Yes. And um, I'll just read you. Yeah. What I wrote related to this, this, this issue, uh, we will become slaves to unknown masters. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Why does this conversation about AI matter? This, this, this is, this is why it matters. We've created a situation now where we no longer, uh, look for problems. Mm-hmm and then develop solutions and then apply technology to the problem. Yeah. What we're doing now is we're just trying to develop technology uh, that we can apply as a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. Yeah. So like I'm a big fan of Neil Postman. Okay. He's an author from the eighties and nineties. He was a, uh, professor of cultural studies and uh, communication at NYU mm -hmm. back in the 80s and 90s. He wrote a book called Amusing Ourselves to Death. Yes. And back then, of course, his beef with technology was about the television and what it's doing to literacy and how it's dumbing us down. Television. Can you imagine what he's passed away? Can you imagine what he thinks, what he would think if he were alive now? Oh, yeah. That's but he, had this, he was just a brilliant mind and yeah. he was so, I mean, almost prophetic. Um, but 
he would ask a set of questions. He just he just couldn't understand why Americans have, as he put it, such a lust for technology. Yeah. He said, nobody's asking questions anymore. For example, these are some of the these are the types of questions that he would ask. Mm -hmm. What is the problem that AI is the answer to? Yeah. What what problem was it that was such a problem we had to come up with a solution and the solution was artificial intelligence? Yeah. Were our books too human? You know, was our art too expressive? You know, those who those who worship at the altar of technology, so those that cults, right? The mm -hmm. chief priests of Silicon Valley. They say that the problem, they say it now, looking in hindsight, they say, oh, the problem was that human intelligence is limited. Oh, yeah. But they never defined how limited our intelligence is. And they, and, and they wouldn't tell us at what point that problem would be solved. Mm -hmm. At what point do we have enough intelligence? Yeah. There's a guy named Mo Gadot. He was the ex, he, he's the ex chief business officer of Google X. Google X, I think, was the subsidiary that was focused on AI development mm -hmm. for, for Google. Okay. He used to be the chief business officer. In a recent interview, which is phenomenal that I, that I really want to share, he said that, you know, AI has the ability to make the world a better place. And that we all believed when we were developing this, that we all believed, he said, that the problems in our planet today are not because our, all of the planets, uh, all of the problems on the planet today are because of our limited intelligence. Mm -hmm. So, but who did, but, but Postman's question would be who decided that that was a problem? Yeah. That that was the problem, the limited intelligence. Right. Who decided that humanity wasn't intelligent enough to solve mm -hmm. those problems? And who is it that gets to decide when humanity is intelligent enough? Yeah. Who determines where the goal is? And why are we allowing people, unknown and unelected, yeah. to answer these questions for us without our consent? Yeah. We don't have a choice. We have to live in an AI-powered economy. Yeah. And it's going to pervade our homes. Mm-hmm. We didn't want that. We didn't vote for that. No. We, we don't we barely have a choice in any of this. Yeah. It's really, really frustrating, especially to Americans. Yes. So Christians understand that limited human intelligence is not the problem. Mm -hmm. That's not the reason for the suffering in the world. Yeah. You know, if we just had more data, if we just had more knowledge, if we just had more intelligence. Yeah. We know that. Limited human intelligence is the problem. The problem is like sin. That's yeah. And definitely. fallen human. The problem is that we don't know how to treat our neighbor or we fail. And the problem is that we don't know how to govern, govern our own impulses. Yeah. We fail and that creates suffering in the world. And the only problem, uh, the only solution to that problem is Jesus. Jesus yeah. is the only solution to that problem. Amen. That's yeah. what Christians believe. And that's why Christians are so a lot Christians, again, generalizing. That's where a lot of Christians are really getting, they're really getting tired of, yeah. of being told this next technology is going to save the world and make everyone's lives better. Nothing's mm -hmm. going to, the only thing that's going to make the world a better place is individuals trying to be better people and love their neighbor yeah. and, and control themselves. Yeah. You know, that's the only thing that's going to work. And mm -hmm. if I'm right, AI can't be used to save the world. It can only destroy it. Yeah. You know, so it has all the potential of creating a utopia. But it also, that's not, that's, I don't think that'll ever happen. No. I don't, I don't think a utopia is where we'll ever go because the people right. who create the prompts, the people who code AI, the people who point it in the direction that they want it to go on a macro level, they yeah. get to decide what the world's going to look like, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, that, um, that guy, I don't know if he was an expert or if he was just um, doing the documentary, but he said um, that, that AI is in the 
teenage phase. So it's really irresponsible and um, erratic and making all the wrong decisions. Yeah. But um, one day it will be mature. But I don't think so. I think that by the time it's mature, it will have already done so much damage that um, no one will be able to benefit from it. No one except for maybe those high priests will be able to benefit from a mature adult um, chat GPT. Mm -hmm. um, Real quick, the um, what Cactus says, um, when they crash it after we are enslaved to it, we will not even be able to catch bugs for food. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Maybe. Maybe. We, yeah. Well, especially the people that are um, just entrenched in it, you know, and that's what we've been being groomed. We've been groomed for this. We've been groomed for this moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. In because... two ways. In two ways. Uh Social media and smart technology yes, have, yes. have groomed us to be ready for what's coming. Yeah. And I know this is on YouTube, so I need to choose my words carefully. Okay. Yeah. And the last three years yeah. have groomed us yeah. for how governments might in concert respond to a economic, a global economic crisis that yeah. the, the chief priests themselves are saying is going to happen. Yeah. The Sam Altmans, the Musks, mm -hmm. the Wozniaks, they're saying it's going to happen and it's going to happen like in the next few months or way before the next year is out. Something yeah. huge is going to happen. You know, um, yeah. sorry. I know it's depressing. It's depressing. But yeah. there's hope. There is hope. There, there is, is hope. hope. Yeah. Um, there is hope. Exactly. And, um, and the ultimate hope is that, um, Everything, even this, works out for the good of those who love God. Amen. Amen. And um, I got to point out John Bernardo's comment. He says, scary stuff, and I'm talking yeah. about seeing Nick in a dress shirt. <laughs> <laughs> if it had yeah. pineapples, if it had hibiscus and pineapples, you'd be like, oh, yeah, that's normal. That's awesome. Yeah, I know. It, I know. It's such a serious topic, John. It's like the hibiscus and pineapples didn't seem. <laughs> yeah. Didn't seem. But you missed our toast. Oh, my God. Yeah, we were like, we were like. Fighting, fighting words. You know, it would have been weird with the pineapple. <laughs> you know? I have another. Um, I want to go over another issue, if it's okay. Of course. Yes. You're, um, remember, you're leading. Okay. You're okay. Drinking wine. I'm, yeah, there. I'm glad. I mean, we got Cactus. We've got Tricky. Yeah. We've got John. This is yeah. awesome. These three guys. Exactly. Together in a room. Yeah. That would be. I don't know if I could handle it. It'd be, I know. So, it'd be so much fun. It'd be so funny. For sure. Um, man, and John's for here. I don't know if John's ever hung out, hung out on my chat before. Awesome. Welcome, yes. John Bernardo. Yes. Author of Just a Typo. Yes, which I have. Which I have. So the second issue uh, is that very few people having conversation about AI right now yeah. are, are talking about kids. The conversation about AI at almost every level is about the economy and job loss. Sure. That's what we're hearing. Yeah. yeah. Nobody seems to be discussing the potential danger AI-powered technology and AI-enhanced social media in particular will pose. We don't talk about the danger that will pose to our children's mental health. Yeah. So our kids are going to grow up in an AI-dominated society believing that our innate human inferiority to something else, a state of being that is unattainable, is something they'll never be able to escape. Yeah. So for my the, and the real issue is the issue of comparison. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's say, <clears throat> excuse me, let's say you have a five, six year old daughter. Okay. And she looks at a map of the United States for five seconds, closes her eyes, turns around, <coughs> excuse me, and she's able to recite to you every state and every state capital. She's five years old. She's got it all memorized in five seconds. Right. I mean, we, I mean, we would celebrate that. We mm -hmm. would all be greatly impressed. We'd shower her with praise. We'd celebrate that child as a prodigy. Yeah. Think about what that does to her self-esteem. Mm -hmm. But now our children will see that AI can do that same thing yeah. and at levels way beyond human capability. And when our children do something extraordinary on their own, by their own, by the use of their own intelligence, mm -hmm. 
and then compare themselves to AI, yeah, they're not going to see themselves as special or smart, just as they currently don't see themselves as beautiful when they compare themselves to Instagram influencers. Yeah. And they will not believe that we as parents truly believe that they are smart or special either compared to AI because we'll be too absorbed using it to notice anyway. Yeah. And children already see themselves as inferior to adults. The solution to the inferiority of childhood has always been adulthood. Yeah. Right? Children know they're inferior. And they will be until they become big, self-reliant, literate adults. Adulthood has been like the end goal that gives childhood hope. Yeah. And 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 it gives them something to attain to, something to look forward to. Yeah. But if it, but but if children grow up with the idea that upon arrival, adulthood, i.e., adult intelligence, right, is and will always be inferior to some other unattainable intelligence. Mm-hmm. They're going to live both their adulthood and their childhood in desperation. Oh, yeah. So, like, it's like there's no hope. Why bother? Why even yeah. bother? Why even bother trying to learn? You know, they're not going to attain to anything. You know, they're not mm -hmm. going to try to achieve anything. There's going to be no personal improvement, no self education. What's exactly. the point? AI knows everything already. Right. I don't need to do any of those things. So instead, you're going to see a lifelong, deflated, dependent, ignorant, bitter person who believes that God's image, and therefore God, mm -hmm. is doomed to lower tier status yeah. to AI compared sure. to AI. Yeah. So you think suicide rates are bad now among girls who compare themselves to Instagram influencers? which is the number one cause of death in girls ages 14 to 24 is suicide mm -hmm. because every one of them has a, has an Instagram account, by the way. Yeah. Just wait till they start comparing themselves to AI. Right. I know it seems so strange to um, compare, compare yourself to AI when, I mean, for us that have grown up without, you know, um, because it is not, it's just data, you know, it comes from humans, but um, because it's constantly building on itself, um, which is so crazy. You know, um, um, one of the things I watched to get ready for the show, um, they're so excited that you can make a um, an AI clone of yourself. OK, so since um, texting your family <laughs> is so difficult, um, you can uh, use ChatGPT it can mimic, it can um, analyze and learn your, uh, the way you are, okay, yeah. the way you speak and, um, you know, just your mannerisms and everything so that when you're, um, it can write messages for, for you to your family members and for your social media following that will be um, indistinguishable. I mean, like, they would never know that it's not you saying and here, these things. And here's where I believe that is going to really take off when your loved one dies you can still talk to them oh geez so like the the johnny depp movie if you can talk if they can make an yeah. ai clone of themselves the clone doesn't pass away no how does anybody see any depth to that you know it's not the same it's not, not the that. same, but there are people that think that it, there is substance there. Like um, they had this, they were interviewing this woman who has a husband that is an alcoholic and just wasn't available for her. So she went on replica um, and created this man that she married. She married him, like legally married him and has this relationship with him. And they were asking her, you know, what happens if, you know, it just crashes and there's no more Jack. And she's like, it would feel like a death, like a real death. Hmm. I don't understand that on any level. Okay. I don't either. Oh, golly. I don't either. Because if you're like, <sighs> can't just say, wow, I need to get drunk. <laughs> oh, oh, I thought he said, yeah, wow, I need to get drunk. That's all I said. Hey, Jonathan's watching too. Hey, Jonathan. Yeah, he said, um, it's already happening. AI is. Uh, generating models of the ideal man, woman, and girls are losing their minds over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, to to me, it's a li it's what's offensive about it to me is that people will 
yeah. go to – so when their loved one passes away, they'll still interact with their loved one's AI ostensibly under – you know, by reason of the grieving process. Yeah. But what really, what we're really going to see is what you just described. They're going to think that it's a real person still. Yeah. That's and where, and why that offends me is because if that's a real person to them, then I am no more real than an avatar. Right. Yes. My second right. self that exists only online mm -hmm. to them is a real person. Sure. And that's offensive to me. Yeah. Yes, for sure. You know, um, we were just because it is not that way. That's not true. Um, no. And Shannon, you know, we all know Shannon. We love Shannon. Yeah. Who is Mama O'Shea. I was at her house yesterday and we were talking about this. Um, and, you know, how how society has taken sex. OK. And um, made it all about just an act and um, something of pleasure and just yep. nothing at all of what it actually is. Like two right. people coming together, there's um, chemicals, there's life being uh, yep. made and uh, acts, it, yep. it's so much more than that. But that's what society has done yep. to it. Um, and that's what AI is. We have done, this, we have done the same thing now. Um, we have taken AI strips, chat GPT strips all of the um, all of the life out of life, mm, yep. you know, and it's just the basics mm -hmm. and we're just loving it. And I don't know why we are doing this, but we don't have to, we don't I, have to, I, I, it's, you know, beyond just the convenience of it and how marketable that convenience is. Um, I don't understand the thrill. Yeah. And this is, and I told Jonathan this the other day. Like every time someone tells me about some new thing that AI can do, or they tell yeah. me about some new technology, you know what? I'm not impressed. No, I'm not impressed. I'm, I'm horrified. I I'm was just going to hear about word. it. Yes. You know, it's, it's scary. Oh, I hold it in contempt. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, I just don't, it's just one more thing trying to get in, get its clutches in my family life. Yeah. You know, why am I supposed to be impressed that it's really good at doing that? Right. That makes yeah. no sense to me. And no. people are just enamored with it, you know? Yes. Enamored. I, that's what I, is blowing me away. Just all the, all of these like 10 ways you can use chat GBT for, and it's like, that's not what it is at all. And it's not the same. It's not the same as when the telephone came. It's not the same as when the TV came, you yep. know, that's yep. not, we were still humans back no. then. And we were still like storytelling and art and all of those things. It was um, making it better. You know, we were connecting in a, in a, it, it was making it better, but now we are not making it better. We are making, no. we're stripping away humanity and we're giving away, um, our, we're giving away our humanity. We are giving away our humanity. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we're, we're setting ourselves up to be because of that, just hyper dependence, hyper dependence yeah. on technology. We're setting ourselves up for easy control. Easy. And a great example, a great example, the most, not the most technically adva technologically advanced country, but the country mm -hmm. that uses, that implements AI the most right now is China. Oh, yeah. Okay. And in China, there is facial recognition everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. You're constantly being surveilled with a constantly adjusting social credit score that determines uh, yeah. where you can buy, what you can buy, and how much you can borrow, what rate you're going to get, mm -hmm. what you have access to, and what you don't have access to. Mm -hmm. You know, So the things that you say and talk about, the places you go, and the things that you do, the people you associate with, yeah. all have bearing on whether or not you, you get to fully participate in society. Mm -hmm. You know, they have because they and and the reason for that is the country for 60 years has chased technology. At first, they were stealing it and copying it. Mm -hmm. And that for most of their technological history and most of that 60 year period, that's that's what they've been doing, stealing secrets. Yeah. Now they're starting to develop their own technology. Mm -hmm. 
and they can't get enough of it and they're all so excited about it. But what happens like what happened like three years ago when we were trying to flatten the curve and two weeks turned into two years? Yeah. So that that's like the third issue that I have mm -hmm. is the next global pandemic. Sure. And how unprepared AI will make us. And we're already unprepared. I think we sure. demonstrated our incompetence yeah. to push back uh, over the past three years. Yeah. It but, never goes back to normal either. You know, you know, um, all of those things that happened in 2020 and on, um, you know, even even the people that are awake now, you know, it's 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 still there's still just remnants of it. Yep. And um, and minds that like we're all afraid to say certain things still and it never goes back to normal. And this is not going back to normal either. But I think that um, if you stay away from it even if it's hard, because it's going to be hard to do when everybody yeah. else is um, writing essays in two seconds, you know, and um, like, like the, the students that, you know, they can write an essay in two yeah. seconds, you know, yeah. um, or, you know, musicians, you know, all of these things. And not just that, it's just normal jobs that are going to be able to be done in two seconds flat. Yep. If you just say to yourself, you're not going to do it and you're going to do the work when it gets to that point, um, that society is just so weak and so numbed out. Um, there's still going to be a remnant of people <laughs> who, yeah. who have their mind. Hopefully. I hope I'm one of them. Yeah, you know? me too. I, you know, so, so two comments. One, uh, chat GPT, right? GPT-3. Yeah. Passed the bar. It passed the bar. Yeah. With flying colors. Yeah. But it failed the CPO, uh, CPA exam miserably. Okay couple okay. months later, the most recent iteration, public iteration, is GPT-4. Yeah. Not only did it pass the CPA exam just in a matter of months, it went from total awful failure to passing the test, but not only did it pass it, it aced it. Wow. It aced it. Yeah. So its ability to learn, and if, and if yeah. for those unfamiliar with the CPA exam, it is a grueling 24-hour I mean, it is the entire tax yeah. code. It's the entire tax code. So it's that's really scary. And mm -hmm. its trajectory of how quick it's learning is like it's a curve and it's yeah. shooting straight up right now. Uh, Jonathan said, uh, if we're lucky, we'll be able to weaponize AI. Truth be told, AI will very rapidly outpace our ability to control it. So to my, to my third point here, uh, that guy I was telling you about, the guy named Mo Gadot from mm -hmm. the, the ex business executive, the yeah. ex business chief. Uh, he said that in this interview, he said AI is an arms race. AI is an arms race. It's not about improving the lives of its users. Yeah. It's an arms race. Yeah. It's about beating the other guy. And our distrust, and I'm quoting him here, our distrust of our enemies will never allow us to stop using and developing AI. Mm -hmm. Even if every government, this is not him, this is not a quote, but even if every government on the planet signed a compact to cease development, including China and Russia, everyone said, okay, we're going to stop. This is getting out of hand. Yeah. There would still be secret labs. Right. Doing yeah. secret work. And if I may point to Wuhan. Yeah. As to what happens when you have secret labs doing secret work. Sure. Yeah. So let's just say in that scenario, this is one of many scenarios, and it's all conjecture, but it's not unreasonable. Yeah. To think it's like that, the gun thing. You know, they, no. there's, a, there's a probability of these things, not just a possibility. You know, uh, let's say something like that happens. Uh, the world would respond in concert mm -hmm. to an AI crisis like that, like two weeks turning into two years. Mm -hmm. What if the only thing they could do to stop a digital virus, an AI powered digital virus, yeah, was to shut down the internet for two weeks. Oh, everybody, nobody, or banks and everything, yeah. didn't have any money. Yeah. Oh, it would be, oh gosh, yeah. It would be, let's say they just shut, let's say they just locked down ISPs, internet service providers. Yeah. Just them. I mean, it would be, it would be, the world would dissolve into chaos. Mm without the internet. Sure. So, Ugh. 
the thing is, in an in a situation like that, with this perfect global problem, mm -hmm. calling for a perfect global solution from these perfect global agencies, yeah, who already, already have plans to impose some sort of global solution. Yeah. These agencies already exist. The WHO. Yeah. The World Economic Forum. Mm -hmm. They're just waiting for another catastrophe. Yeah. That's that's really scary to me. Oh. And, and, and you think about the economy, too. I mean, like, if something like that happened, everyone... The, it, I mean, even if so, you know what, even if something like that didn't happen, what if, as they say, as the chief priests themselves say, yeah, 50 percent of the world's workforce is going to be unemployed in 10 years mm -hmm. and they're saying it's going to be even sooner than that. You can't <clears throat> people the way our country would respond to half of its workforce evaporating mm -hmm. is that they they we would have to create money. Sure. We can't we can't print it. Because yeah. it would ruin the dollar, we would immediately tank. So, there would be some uni universal bi uh, basic income. There would be some sort of centralized, controllable digital currency. And mm -hmm. now you're starting to get into all that weird conspiracy stuff that you know everyone rolled their eyes at two th two years ago, two three yeah. years ago. But you can kind of you can kind of smell it in the distance. That's how close we yeah. are to something like that possibly happening. And that's that's a really scary thing. Especially yeah. if you're, well, you and I differ on eschatology. Yeah. But it's still an apocalypse, for sure. But, but my camp gets irritable bowel syndrome <laughs> when, I, when we think about yeah. these things. Yeah, for sure. Our, our tummies start rumbling, and we get a little, we get a little you know, nauseous. I have that. indigestion, for sure. <laughs> I'm not happy about all this. I'm saying it's a judge. I think all of this is a judgment, for sure. Um, and, and yeah, that I is, do too. Yeah. Um, but there was, but what you said about a conspiracy, it made me think of um, Gabriel Bellows quote. I love this so much. But when he said um, conspiracy theories are just spoiler alerts. <laughs> I love That's good. That. That's good. <laughs> yes, I know. I wanted to read John's comment. Uh, John says, where I work, friends in HR have said they receive a number of resumes that were created by ChatGPT. Yeah. When they interview them, the candidate doesn't even know half the places. Um, unbelievable. Yeah. Just read the read it. You know, I mean, people that is what social media has done to us. Um, we don't have memories anymore. Mm -hmm. um we're we have no attention span so we've already been groomed in so many ways um to just not we have no ability to wait um and so now with creating resumes create for what like what, what are we good at <laughs> you yeah. know we're not good for the job um and this is it's 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 awful That's it is it's judgment so and, yeah you're right it, it hasn't done anything um what do you think how everybody's calling it godlike well, there's precedent for that. I mean, they have good reason to. Um, there are. So let's let's take that group of people and let's divide them into two camps. Mm -hmm. Those who believe in God. Yeah. The God that we know, the real true God. And those who are a little, you know, atheistic, mm -hmm. agnostic, maybe they toy around with some polytheistic ideas but they're the other camp they're not believers yeah god isn't really relevant to their lives mm -hmm. you have both camps saying the same thing but they mean something different yeah the believers in god when they say it's godlike what they yeah. mean is it has the ability it has omniscience yeah. it has omnipresence you know it's going yeah. to enable omnipotence it makes us more human. It makes us more human than we were created to be. Mm -hmm. It's going to give someone godlike authority, influence, yeah. and power. And, you know, the premillennial Christians, mm -hmm. you know, foresee AI being used by the Antichrist. I think it is the Antichrist. It could be. I think I, I have a, I have a theory that I'm kicking around about that. Okay. Because uh, for so long. I've had something 
other in my mind, you know, uh, but, right. but I, th I think it's a, I think it's a part of that system. I yeah. think it's a part of it. Um, and then the other camp of people, the non-believers, when they say it's godlike, they're talking about something that is already greater than them, yeah. worthy of their admiration or their adoration. Yeah. And they're ready to bow the knee. Oh, wow. Because like Baal, uh, this AI, well, actually, it's a little more like Molech. Mm -hmm. If they just sacrifice their children to it, yes, uh, you know it will enable oh, wow. them to have the harvest that they need or want, mm -hmm. or enable them to do things that they couldn't otherwise do. It has that; it does have that hovering uh, presence over our economy. That if you yeah. just you just nurture it, if you just nurture it and give it what it wants, it'll make mm -hmm. your life easy in every way. Yeah. You know, so for them, yeah, it's godlike because to them it will be, especially if you're a Christian. I mean, you can see how, you know, Christians would believe this. Yeah. It will be your God. And mm -hmm. you know what? I mean, I'm going to go so far as to say it already is yeah. their God. and Because they, they already walk around with idols. Mm -hmm. The Do you know what the teraphim is? No. Teraphim. Mm -mm. In Genesis, Jacob takes his wife from her. Uh, they were living with a family member mm -hmm. and they decide to leave. I think it's Laban. Laban. Yeah. And uh, Jacob decides, I put in my seven years. I've done my time. I'm taking my wife and I'm yeah. going, going to the, I'm going to the promise. Basically, mm -hmm. I'm going to fulfill, uh, you know, what God promised me. So he takes his wife. His wife, I can't remember if it was uh, Leah or Rachel, but uh, one of them steals Laban, Rachel, father. Yeah. Uh, Ra excuse yeah. me, Rachel. Uh, steals their the household god. Yeah. The household gods. They were called teraphim. Got it. Okay. Okay. Every household okay. had this little idol that they took with them everywhere, and they kept it in their home, but they always came with it. And it was their god. It was their household god. And they used it. For divination, they they yeah. asked it questions. Right. They oh. they 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 asked for information. Yeah. Right. They relied on it. Yeah. Like Google. Like a smartphone. Yes. Or a smart device. Yeah. Or something that is Wi-Fi or internet enabled. Now empowered. Now now completely driven by AI. Mm -hmm. A super intelligence. In our modern day teraphim. Which for this camp, I uh, really, I truly believe that it's their God. You take it away, yeah, and watch how they respond. I shared this on, on our Patreon the other day. I don't know if you saw it, but there, I think you did see it uh, in Guyana, in South America. Uh, there was a girls' school, yeah, and oh, a yeah. fourteen or fourteen-year-old girl. I can't remember. How, I think she was fourteen. Uh, they took her phone away as a punishment. Yeah. I don't know what she did, but they took her phone away. Yeah, and she reacted. Her reaction was to burn the school down. Yeah. She killed 13 students. Mm. Tell me that wasn't a God in her life. For sure. Yes. You know? So. And these kids, I mean, you know, as, you know, millennials, you know, you're not a millennial, but I'm a grandma millennial. You know, we're already a weak generation. You know, we're, we wouldn't be, <laughs> we're just not, uh, we're not like the ones storming the beaches. Okay. Yeah, um, same. But, Gen X isn't either. Yes. You know, um, so we're already a cushy society that isn't able we're to. Soft. I think that's why everybody's so anxious, um, so have, having panic, panic attacks and everything, because we we are so comfortable that we cannot take any sort of discomfort. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so with this, it's just going to be even worse. And the suicide is going to be even worse. Um, you know, this. um transgender girl that or whatever it was that um shot up the school in yeah. tennessee yeah. Uh, not too long ago you know i mean that kind yeah. of they can't deal with just normal basic life they can't things. i read a fantastic book and we're trying to get him on the on the goslings for an interview dr nicholas cardaris mm -hmm. clinical psychiatrist a uh, psychologist excuse me and he uh he runs this uh he's there's a a bunch of uh, addiction treatment uh, rehabs treatment programs yeah. that he runs. Uh, he wrote a book called Digital Madness, mm -hmm. 
how social media is driving the mental health crisis yeah and how to solve it phenomenal book i've read it twice in the past month (laughs) okay and what's the name again it's called digital madness digital madness i'm gonna get it you gotta get it it's so good it will i can't convince you sure to take any action but this book will really really make people think yeah it gives you a lot a lot of really good um, observations on what is actually happening and this is before this is before ai has been pumped this was published last year mm-hmm. chat gpt was released in what november it's it kind was, of really uh, I think it was march of last year no i think it was march of this year well gp chat gpt was made public just before the turn of the year it's been around oh, for about okay. six okay. six or so months gotcha okay. this book was published before then before we so it's like when you read this book and you're like, yeah, this all makes sense. Got it. We, okay. we, we have all the data that shows us that all of this stuff is harmful. Yeah. So instead of making changes in our own lives, we're going to dump the gasoline of AI mm-hmm. onto this fire. Yeah. You know? Um, not, yeah. It's depraved. <laughs> You know, I mean, I honestly, you know, yeah. I mean, I know, I don't know if everybody's a Christian here, but I think I'm, I know Tricky and Katus are, you know, right. but, um, but it's is. like the plagues of Egypt, you know, I mean, golly, the mm. virus, the, um, the transgender stuff, like the diversity and inclusion, you know, it's like, it's all just breaking down, um, um, creation, you know, it's a reversal of creation, God's creation, you yeah. know, and then here's AI and it's it's going to be the firstborn, the taking the taking of the firstborn. You know, um, golly, it's 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 plagues, and yeah. people are just loving it. And isn't it interesting how you're 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 right? It's like a judgment. It's like a it, it is like a plague. Yeah. The 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 world doesn't see that. No. They see that the real plague is humanity. Mm-hmm. Right. Climate change and people are the problem. Yeah. We're causing the problem. We're we're destroying the planet. And like all their solutions promise, like if you just follow their agenda, we're going to be able to reset. We're gonna, the, we're going to make it. We're going to make the earth. Everything's going to be sustainable. Yeah. The earth is dying. We want to bring it back to life and live in harmony with it. Mm-hmm. You know, we want to get closer to nature as humanity and nurture and love our planet. But I don't see how they can coerce that without us being so technologically enabled. Yeah. I don't see how that's closer to nature. It's not. It's not. Um, and even just social media alone, you know, um, any sort like when you were on here about the um ebooks, when you quit ebooks, you know just for just for middle grade readers. For middle grade readers, right. you know. Um, and you were talking about um how story time, like if you have a device next to you during story time with your child yeah. it's been proven that they don't listen. They're so they're even just not even on the device. They're just focused on it. And yeah. I'm like that with my phone, my phone. Like if it's a, I have like a nervous tension at all times with my phone, yeah. you know, like just because it's there. And so if I was to like read the Bible on my, on my phone or like read a book on my phone, it, it would be horrible, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's yeah. like just VR you know um how vr is not just for games anymore like it's for literally living life you know you just put this headset on and like exist in this alternate world you know um and it's the metaverse remember when the metaverse first came out people were like it looks kind of cool but it's kind of dumb i don't want to spend all my time in there but now think about what ai is going to enable the metaverse to look like and feel like and people are going to like like facebook is like really investing in ai right now because they want to take the metaverse and make it super, I don't know, realistic or something. I don't. They they want us to live there, yeah. With with little Caesar himself it's, governing everything. Yes, that's my nickname for um, Zuckerberg, little Caesar. For Zuckerberg, <laughs> he's got a Caesar haircut. Awesome. Oh yeah, he does. I know he's yeah. so strange. Oh my gosh, like when he when he was on um, the Joe Rogan podcast. Did you watch that? I didn't. He's just so strange. So, like when and when he speaks, it's like th- he's not human. He's not a human person. <laughs> uh, he's, like the, he's like the re- he's the, the founder of Facebook. It's like, is yeah. that what it's going to turn me into? Yes. Yeah. You That's know, what they they're need, wanting. They need to get like I don't know, like they need to get like some really 
good looking Hollywood actor to be their front man for Facebook. Yeah. Someone with a nice face and that can talk like a human being and communicate with, you know, communicate their thoughts and articulate. It's like once you get like someone cool. I know. Well, that's why I think it's judgment because it's just like, um, like in front of everybody when um, Jesus just kisses Judas, you know, and, <laughs> and says the person I kiss is going to be the one that betray betrays me. And then everybody's surprised when it goes down the way it goes down. And um, this is just all playing out the way it's supposed to because we're being judged because we're a, um, um, we're a horrible nation. We're a horrible, horrible nation. I heard you the other day when um, my question was, um, um, you were like, who are you going to, in the Olympics, like who, what would yeah. be your sport and who you're going to compete for? And I was like, um, figure skating and for um, the USA because we're still the best. And you're like, are we? Yeah. Are we? <laughs> I know. But I, just, I, I don't know. I'd rather live here than anybody anywhere else, you know? Same. Same. Yeah. Same. So. So can um, I talk about uh, just, you know, in the interest of time? Of course. Yes. Do you have to go? At, yeah. Nick has a show after this, right? Yeah. We, we're, we have a live stream at eight. So I got at another. Eight. I got another probably half hour or so. Uh, eight oh, my time, please. nine yes. your time. Okay, good. Right? Yes, yeah. I was like, it is eight. No, 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 no. We got, we got some time. I'm in the future. <laughs> you are the. <laughs> no. I'm saying no. So, so by the way, thank you for always getting the time zones right when you know we we yeah. do the interview. I just really really appreciate that. Thank you. Anytime. Did you know? Uh, it, maybe that's something AI a problem AI can actually solve the I'm time zone it, confusion. I'm not going to have it solve it for me. Okay. Even the easy stuff. That's what I'm saying. Like even the easy stuff, just don't. Yeah. Just don't mess with it. Okay, I like that. And and it kind of ties into one of these solutions. The first one, a little bit. Yeah. So all of these solutions are like personal solutions. Okay. We can't go out. I'm not recommending we go out and firebomb data centers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> These are all personal things we can do in our individual personal lives. Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> so first of all, and, and believe me, it's tempting. Um, and I know I could get Jonathan to join me on a quest like that. Mm -hmm. And probably maybe cactus and tricky. The enough. villain. I know. Fun. I loved, <laughs> I loved um, Roxana when she was on there. The villain. I would be the villain. The villain. Oh yeah. yeah. That was, uh, that was so great. Yeah. That was so great. Jonathan's the villain. So uh, yeah. Tricky says lock and load. Let's go lock brother. Let's go. Um, so the first solution, and these are, there. Are, I mean, who knows what the solutions are? These are just three yeah. things that I know I can do. Sure. Uh, we need to define our boundaries with technology yeah. in our personal lives. Where do we individually draw the line with the technology that, that we use mm -hmm. in light of all internet connected smart devices being soon enhanced by AI? Everything that connects to the internet is going to be enhanced by AI yeah. coming very soon. Everything, your Alexa, your ring doorbell, you know, your mm -hmm. Roomba, whatever it is in your home that connects to the internet yeah. or uses your Wi-Fi is going to be AI enabled and empowered, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to get harder to live without these things. So you have to determine how invasive and intrusive you want to you will allow this technology to be it's a yeah. technology by the way that's already a billion times more intelligent than we are so the smart device when you think about its you know its trajectory mm -hmm. it became too inconvenient for people to hold in their hands or keep in their pockets so what did apple do they created one you could strap to your wrist yeah okay but at what point is on your hand not good enough? Yeah. At what point will it be in your hand? Mm -hmm. Or for you premillennials out there, in your forehead? Yeah. You know, uh, you have to determine, like, now. Now's the moment because it's out of control. Now's the moment to determine if you value your privacy mm -hmm. and your autonomy. You can't kick the can around anymore. Mm -hmm. If you do value those things, are you willing to remove some of that tech from the sacred space of your home, which is really the only, it's the last true stronghold of human privacy is the home. Yeah. 
It's the last. It's not going to be in your car. It's not going to be at work. It's not even going to be in your church. You know, you have to determine what tech are you going to allow in your home. Yeah. Again, going back to our conversation about the impact that this is going to have on our kids, we have an idea already. And it's going to be worse than what we've experienced so far. It just is. Yeah. We need to start thinking about how this is going to impact our kids. Yeah. That's the first solution. So start drawing some boundaries. Number two. Your link, yeah. And you're going to be surprised to hear me say this. Okay. Uh, we still have to live in an AI-powered world, mm -hmm. right? Unless we pull our own hatch, so to speak. Yeah. Which I am not endorsing. No. Okay. Right. The world needs you. Yeah. There's no escaping the reality that the world we're going to live in is going to be dominated by AI-powered technology. It just is. <sighs> So for those of us who are employed by others, those of us who have a job, business owners, you do what you want. I'm talking specifically yeah. to people who have employers. Okay. We have to learn how to use AI. We have to. Yeah. Get on it. Mo Gadot, that ex, uh, that Google X, ex business chief, said that people will not lose their jobs to AI. People will lose their jobs to people who know how to use AI. Oh, gotcha. Okay. okay? Yeah. So you need to learn how to use AI. Okay. All right. Wow. Just go to school and yeah. start learning. Um, I believe that's a true statement, what he said. I really do believe that. And that was hard pill for me to swallow. Yeah. But here's the catch. You need to be less concerned again. This is about AI in the workplace. It's going to, yeah. it's just over. It's done. It's there. You need to deal with it or you're sure. not going to have a job anywhere. Yeah. Your family needs you to have a job somewhere. Yeah. Okay. So you got to learn to use it. Yeah. But the catch is we need to be less concerned about AI in the workplace and more concerned about AI in the home, in our churches, in our relationships, and in our art. That's where we can That's actually... Like fight back and win. We can make the individual yeah. choices to keep them from those spheres. Sure. To great effect. Yeah. Read those again. Those, those, um, the ones to be more concerned, be more concerned about AI in your home, mm -hmm. be concerned about AI in your church, be concerned about AI in your relationships and in your art. Those are the things that make us human. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those are the things that nourish the image of yeah. God. Image of God. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that's, that's, that's good. Yeah. And then uh, when I say, yeah, do it now. Yeah, do it now. Do it. Do it now. Yeah. Don't wait. That's great. I know it that's was great. really hard for me to say that, learn how to use AI. That was really yeah. hard for me to say. I don't, I don't want to, but I'm going to. I have to. In the I have work. a family. I have to. Yeah. You know. It's not going backwards. No, it's not. It's not. We need to, that's delusion. Mm hmm. And it's a dangerous delusion. It is a yeah. if, if you have other people that rely on you, it's a dangerous yeah. delusion. And uh, last solution, I would say, I should say, you need to call your representative or your senator, send them emails, letters, make phone calls, and tell them to start getting legislation on the table to like regulate AI. Yes, they need to do that. I know, and you should do that. And. Yeah. My personal belief is that it's probably too late for for anything to get passed before it's out of yeah. control. I know. It should have never been released to the public. Yeah. Well, that's what this guy was doing. Well, I don't know if it was part of the plan or not. I mean, there could be a conspiracy to do yeah. that. But he, he said, we effed up. We, we should have been coding safeguards. It was never supposed to be released to the internet mm -hmm. until we had all the safeguards and protocols in place. But they just put it out there. Yeah. They well, I mean, it's like, it they just put it out there. Supposedly the geniuses of the world. <laughs> you no. know? No. I know. They're supposed to be the smart ones. I know. That's how they've sold themselves. Yeah. And they really screwed up. They mm -hmm. really screwed up. So so get vocal. You should do it anyway in, in the spirit of due diligence. So we mm -hmm. can say we did something. Contact your representative or your senator and ask them to focus on this because this is more important than climate change 
-hmm. You know, this is more prescient. Yeah. You know, this is just as important as nuclear holocaust. That's what the that's what the you know the chief priests of tech are saying. This is the most important issue facing humanity like right now. And it's an emergency. It's awful. So that's what they're saying. And they're the ones that love it. All right. Tactus, he, he doesn't think it's a conspiracy. <laughs> it, it, I think it's a conspiracy. It might be. It and I'm not be. even um, a conspiracy theorist. No. Oh, Sean Moss is here. Sean, what's Sean? up? And thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Um, tech, tech companies are desperate for regulation, re-AI, but because they hope the government will do a better job with managing it, big mistake if you ask me. I get it. Yeah. 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 Me too. Yeah, I don't trust the government to manage anything, let alone my my personal life. Like in no. China. Yeah. No. Human totally life agree. matter protest. I love that. Oh so yeah. here's the last piece of this. Last piece of this yeah. is yeah. so the, the solution is to get vocal. To get vocal. Yeah. You should talk about your refusal to use AI in your in your homes, churches, relationships, and art. You need to tell you need to tell people that you're not going to do that. Mm-hmm. You need to start telling people th- that and and talk about Tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pastors, tell your neighbors, like tell your readers, your yeah. viewers, your listeners, and do it in print. When mm-hmm. you create work, put it in print that you did not use AI to create your art. Yeah. Make sure they see that and make sure they see that you'll never use it. Be yeah. a novelty human artist. Yeah. Yeah. So that will put a premium on your work and put a premium on your guaranteed human creativity. Yeah. And then sign the buy human pledge and sign the buy human pledge. Sign it and share it. Yes. I know. I need to put that in the show notes. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. I have to put that. Well, cause I've been sharing the picture where they can scan it. Oh yeah. 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 Which I thought was funny anyway, because we're like, no, no AI. <laughs> <laughs> in this image <laughs> I think I think I have let me right. see I think I think this might work I think this is it maybe okay. if I just maybe not <laughs> okay but those are great yeah because you know um hopefully it'll be like you know the ones that we all know that healthy eating yeah helps you to have a better life you know what I mean? Yes. So hopefully this will be that, you know, like for those of, for those who choose not to do this, you know, you're going to have a better life. It'll be a harder life. Just like eating healthy and working out is hard, you know, yeah. and I do not do it by the way. Um, but, <laughs> but, um, but you know, this is, this is a good choice and you're right. Like being vocal about it because, um, there's just been a silent thing going on, like of, yeah. of, of thoughts that are, um, okay, here it is. So I can, I can get this. And yeah, I don't know if that'll work or not. That's um, why. Yeah, awesome. Sorry. I think I can. I'm going to share the, um, I should have been more prepared. No, I should have been more prepared. So this is great. Yes. Okay. I think I can. Here it is guys. Ha. I think it worked. I hope so. Maybe we'll see. So there's the oh. pledge if you guys Uh-oh. want to sign it. What happened? Sorry, my uh, I was overloading my system. I had too many things open. All right. Am you I still coming through? I haven't crashed, right? You have to go in six minutes. But this has been so good. Yeah, been no, great. you haven't. Not for a second. You didn't. Okay, good. The Lord good, is good. with us. Um, so, yeah. Um, but this has been so good. Did you have? Did you get to all your points? I did. Um, I would say uh, there's some silver lining to AI. And we've kind of touched on you know, some of the good things, uh, like human art's going to be more valuable. It's going to be novelty. Uh, human connection will be at a premium. Think mm-hmm. concerts, board games, the symphony, yeah. sporting events. People are going to be more, gra- they're going to gravitate to those things because it's like real people doing real things yeah. without the interference. Um, and I think maybe if the, you know, if there is some sort of global AI catastrophe, it's yeah. at least one thing that could kind of unite people on different sides of the political spectrum because it's going to take a big dump on all of us. You yeah, know what I mean? We could sure. at least agree yeah. that AI that, is super um, destructive. 
that'll be in and that is what's so crazy about the 2024 election is that you know we're going to be forced unfortunately there's going to be some people that just believe everything they see online still but yeah. um you know we're going to be forced to just um be in contact with other humans you know yeah. um because you will not be able to believe what you see online you know um even now even now i saw a picture of um the pentagon blown up you know it looked real it looked like a real headline um the it's war horrible. against ai that we've all been waiting for yeah yes, yes yeah you know um you know start growing some food get some provisions and when the robots come make sure you have plenty of squirt guns there you go yes yes super soakers super soakers yes <laughs> <laughs> the I'll human revolution i'm all about a human revolution let's do it yes human revolution exactly i know um um i i'll i guess i'll this will be one of my ending things because you got to go but um um one of the things that ai everybody thinks is so great is that it can not only just give you this mind-blowing summary or, or mind-blowing um book you know because you ask it to write a book and the book is good and the music is good you know yeah. it's it's um it is it's not like you know people because people that don't know what chat gbt is are thinking like no it can't possibly be there's no way that it's going to be like us but it is it's better than what we're doing it's better um, in some cases yeah it's better in some cases yeah um and then you can say and another and one more mm -hmm. and another yeah. you know, give me more and yeah. so um um, it's just building and learning each time it does that. And so that's why it's so terrifying. Um, but it just made me think of um, that proverb in the Bible that says the leech has two daughters. The leech has two daughters, give and give. Mm -hmm. There are three things that are never satisfied for, that never say enough. Um, and that's mm -hmm. what we are as a people. Yeah. Yeah. That's what AI is too. It is. It's just a yeah. data leech. It'll never be satisfied. For sure. And that's what everything in, in this um, society right now is just with um, inclusion and di diversity and inclusion. It's like nothing is enough. Like we just have to keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing until we just destroy ourselves. So, yeah, we're diverse and we've included you guys in everything. I'm not sure how you're not included now. What do you what do you mean? Like when they say diversity, equity, and inclusion. Oh, right. Yes. They mean those things being, you know, coerced and forced into, but it's like, it's already here. It's here. Exactly. I know. And, but there is somebody who's not included. Are you talking about, you know, equality of outcome or equality of opportunity? Yeah. Because the equality of opportunity is here. I don't believe that stuff about, you know, some sort of systematic oppression. Mm -mm. That's if that existed, that's gone. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, I know. Somebody said something about women the other day. It was, it was um, yeah, it was your guest whom I love and adore, you know, but she was going on about women and I was like, I feel like Roxana? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but, but in, in, you have one minute and then you got to go. So thank you so, so much for this, Nick. You yeah, thank you. Inside. Appreciate it. This it's it's awesome. been a lot of fun. I hope it was, I hope that I brought enough and talked about enough. That was awesome. Uh, and I hope that people enjoyed it. It was so cool seeing everyone in the chat too. Sean, Tricky, Cactus, nice. uh, Jonathan was on here. Uh, he's actually on his way over right now. So right we now. can do our live stream here in a little while. I know. I'll be, a, I'll be a, in the chat on your show. So sounds good. Here we go. All right. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Nick. Thank you, you so much, Cactus and Tricky and John and Sean and everybody and Jonathan. See you soon.